vaccination is still ongoing in the country. According to the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, over 8,000 have been vaccinated in Nigeria. In Lagos State, more than 300 frontline workers, including the state governor and cabinet members, have been vaccinated. This week, our focus is on the pre- and post-COVID-19 immunization process. I am Olasumbo Mudukbe. Welcome to Sound Health. We take a break now for COVID-19 updates. Based on a careful scientific review of the available information and data on blood clots and low platelets after vaccination with the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, the WHO COVID-19 subcommittee has agreed that the vaccine has a positive benefit risk profile with tremendous potential to prevent infections and reduce deaths across the world. It added that the available data does not suggest any overall increase in clotting conditions following the administration of COVID-19 vaccines. Reported rates of thromboembolic events after COVID-19 vaccines are in line with the expected number of diagnoses of these conditions. Both conditions occur naturally and are not uncommon. They also occur as a result of COVID-19. The observed rates have been fewer than expected for such events. While very rare and unique blood clot events have also been reported following vaccination with the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine in Europe, it is not certain that they have been caused by the vaccination. They recommended that adequate education should be provided to healthcare professionals and persons being vaccinated to recognize the signs and symptoms of all serious adverse events after vaccinations with all COVID-19 vaccines so that people may seek and receive prompt and relevant medical care and treatment. The subcommittee also wants countries to continue to monitor the safety of all COVID-19 vaccines and promote reporting of suspected adverse effects. Vaccination is still ongoing in all 88 approved vaccination sites for all those who are eligible to be vaccinated for the first phase in Lagos State. Commissioner for Health Professor Aki Abayomi said residents can get the vaccine only on weekdays at the designated centers. He added that those allowed for now include healthcare workers, frontline workers, essential duty personnel and persons of 70 years and above. Till date, about 161,000 confirmed cases, over 147,000 discharges, and 2030 deaths have been recorded in 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. Globally, there have been over 112.8 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, including more than 2.7 million deaths reported to WHO while above 397.9 million vaccine doses have been administered. Thanks for staying with us. Today, we are privileged to have Dr. Doi Ogunyemi share our COVID-19 vaccination experience on the show. Dr. Doi Ogunyemi is a public health physician and she's joining us from Lagos via Zoom. Welcome to Sound Health, Dr. Ogunyemi. Thank you for having me. All right, you have had the privilege to be vaccinated. Tell us, how did it go? It went very, very smoothly. I had registered online. That means I went to the National Primary Health Care Development Agency website. On the top right corner, very obvious, click here for e-registration. And I chose the site I wanted, which was a primary health care center around where I reside. Okay. And on the morning of the vaccination, I got to the health center. There were a few others, like health workers as well, waiting to be vaccinated. And when it was my turn, I had my details checked up. I was just asked for my name, and that was punched in. And if you are pre-registered, other details come up. But for a few people I noticed around me who had not pre-registered, they were able to register there and then. And after asking me a few questions um, about my health status, I was then 
told to go and join the queue to be vaccinated. All of this um, did not take any time at all. I got my vaccination on my left arm. Of course, the only thing I felt immediately was the needle going into my body. But other than that, it was excitement for me because hmm. here we are, it's time to be vaccinated. Hmm. Now, afterwards, so later on that day, okay, before I left the facility, I was told to wait for about 15 minutes just to make sure that I had no serious reaction. I was normal until maybe about bedtime where I felt a bit of chills. I didn't run a fever, but I had um, chills, I, like I was cold. So I used paracetamol and I slept soundly. By the second day, um, I felt chills again, very briefly, much shorter than the day before. I did not use, need to use any medication and the arm pain had reduced compared to the first day. Today is the third day. And honestly, except I remind myself, I do not remember that I took the mm -hmm. vaccination. My next appointment is in three months time. All right, Dr. Oguyemi, um, what were the basic questions you were asked at the health center and um, was it free? Yes, it was free. Uh, paid for nothing. The questions I was asked, being female and within the reproductive age group, I was asked if I was pregnant. The second question I was asked was, did I have any allergies at all to anything, any drugs or anything? And the third question I was asked was that, did I have any other disease, you know, ordinarily that I was being managed for? So it was in response to those um, questions that I proceeded to get my vaccination. All right, please let the public know what brand did you get and how many shots were you given? Okay, as far as I know, in the country, the only brand we have is the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. And that's the one I got. Um, it's, you have two doses the first dose and then 12 weeks later you have the second dose which is an average of three months later okay now um the dose does not even take effect in terms of that protection until after about three weeks after the first uh, dose so it means that everybody continues with their precautions because that's the question that always comes next now that you are vaccinated, does that mean you don't have to wear a face mask again? And the, the answer is no, for a few reasons. First is because, first, it has to even take effect. And the full effectiveness is after the second dose. That's one. Secondly, is to note that not everybody around me is vaccinated. It means that we don't have the herd immunity in general. So everybody is still at risk. Thirdly, this vaccine is just a few months old and has not been tested enough to know if when it gives people full protection and they no longer have to wear their mask. That may be when a whole lot of people globally have had the vaccines. So we still need to take all the precautions to ensure that we stay safe. Aside from being a doctor, did you have any fears or doubts about um, getting the vaccines? Thank you for that question. I think it is human and natural to have some fears. Well, um, as a scientist, I had known and talked over time that the main state to control COVID was the vaccine. However, in this part of the world, we don't give adults vaccinations. So the whole idea of getting a vaccine as an adult is probably strange. In other countries, at age 9, age 12, you are getting cervical vaccine. Later on, you are getting your flu shots, and the flu shots are maybe yearly. But for us, after one year, after 18 months, it's over with vaccines. 
So there, there will be that initial, how will my body respond to it? And because I know that there are a range of symptoms that can happen from, from pain at the injection site, swelling, fever, to, to having um, even headaches, and some people having more severe symptoms. One wonders how your own body would uh, respond to it. But it's to be, I was sure that no matter the response, it was something that um, one, I could get management for. So let me note that part of what is on your vaccination card is to report if there's any adverse event following immunization. So that is written, and I actually have the card here. That is written on your, your card. You can report if you have um, any adverse event. So I knew that um, there were still, you know, safety linings around getting it. And yes, a lot of other people have gotten it. 300 million people globally. And in Nigeria, you've quoted over 8,000 people. Mm -hmm. And so we just must continue. When I thought of the benefits of getting the vaccine, overall picture, it did far outweigh the risk of, you know, minor reactions. And so for me, I'll go for it. The major thing people are worried about is blood clots. And perhaps we should address it. More and more, they, they, they're looking into the AstraZeneca vaccine and blood clots. And up to now, there is nothing to prove that the vaccine is a result. I mean, the blood clots people complained about is a direct result of the vaccine. In fact, for more developed countries where the monitor the number of people that have blood clots and so many other things. That number has not changed this year or this month, you know, compared to uh, reports of people having blood clots. So blood clots can occur for people for different reasons, and it has remained within that range despite the introduction of vaccines. And some countries that initially decided to suspend the Oxford AstraZeneca have actually taken steps to reverse it and say that they're going for it. And so is to say that it is safe. It is certainly safe uh, to take. All right, Dr. William, it's still on symptoms. How do you think we can manage um, side effects aside from, you know, the chills and, and slight headache? Because, you know, body system differs now. Okay, so, I mean, if it's the chills, fever, headache, these are things that um, you can take paracetamol, you know, something at all before. But if for any reason it's more serious than that, maybe for any reason you just say that you broke out in allergies, then you have to go back to the center. And that is why, you know, the system is such that you can pick a place either close to where you work or where you live. And they have been put in on what to do if you report um, any reactions. There is an AEFI kit, which is the Adverse Event for Immunization Kit, that has been given also to all of these health centers. And they would administer the first stage immediately. They also have designated hospitals they can refer people to. So far, they have not recorded any of such serious adverse events so far. But yes, what can be done if it does happen has been properly laid out. People have been trained around it. And yes, um, it can be taken care of. After 48 hours you, to 72 hours, you don't expect to feel any of those minor symptoms anymore. Can you still transmit COVID-19 to, other, to others after vaccination? And um, because I know earlier you said you still need to wear a mask after getting the vaccine. Okay, so talking about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine specifically, from studies, by the time you take the first dose, three weeks afterwards, you have almost a 70%, um, it has almost a 70% effectiveness on protecting you. Now, let me explain that. It means that I have a 70% less chance 
of getting the COVID-19 um, infection and the disease versus somebody who did not get the vaccine at all. And by the time I take the second dose, I have almost an 82%, um, if it has almost 82% effectiveness, which also reduces my chances of getting the infection. So it reduces the chances of getting but it does not remove it completely. Now, if uh, one has had the vaccine and still gets the infection, it reduces far well having a disease, you know, affecting your lungs and so many other things compared to the person who has not uh, received it. So, to a large extent, if you do get infected, it will tell me that you can still shed it. But the, the mere fact that the vaccine has reduced your chances makes you um, safer to yourself and to those around you. But like I said, it's still early days. Uh, more and more science is coming out around um, what how much protection i think science is leaning on the side of caution it's better to say please let's do all these things than to throw caution to the wind what must be done to address um, vaccine hesitancy and um, encourage acceptance of the vaccines even before the arrival of the vaccines there were lots of misinformation about the pandemic. How do you address this? Okay, very, very excellent question. I think I like the approach that has been taken so far. So in Nigeria, we started out with our very key leaders, the president, the vice president, the governor of the state. These are key stakeholders. And we saw them publicly get the vaccine. And you know, that, that tells that we won't tell you to take what we ourselves are not taking. Then they went next to the frontline health workers. And you know, just uh, putting it on my own status that I've received the vaccine, got a lot of people asking me questions. Oh, how, how, is it safe? How do you feel? Okay, so I can go get it. So that alone, we are using help workers to model good examples to others to say that, I mean, if we are saying do this and we are also taking it, then it is safe. And I think that's the way to go. In everything you bring, we would always have the innovators, that's the people ready to try it out, when they make up only 2.5% of the population. But you have the early adopters, which make up another maybe 13.5% of the population. Now, these are the people you should target, those that would adopt it very, very early, because we will still have the late, late adopters and would have the laggards. The laggards are those that will wait until almost everybody before they latch onto it. So that's normal and expected. So we should, we should try first with those that we know would pick it up very early. And as they do, we expect a less hesitation. Also, we should let people know um, the, the information. So just like this, keep giving information. Um, let them know the side effects of the vaccine. Let them know what to expect, and let them know that um, it is safe to collect. As as we do more and more of this, then people have uh, more belief in it, and they will come out to to get the vaccination. I I do believe that um, over the next few months um, we are going to have more adoption for the vaccine. Now let's look at storage, distribution, and vaccination. How best can seamless exercise be achieved in the country? Well, I mean, luckily enough, or good enough, you know, if there's anything the primary health care center has been excellent as, it, it's the, the immunization programs. So, I mean, they wanting to kick out polio which we have done thankfully you know and we're still working at is that it strengthened the entire immunization system top all the way down so literally every um, health center has routine immunization supplemental immunizations and they are used to the entire system so we have the cold chain and that was partly why the astrazeneca vaccine was favored because it can be stored 
at the normal refrigerator temperature. So okay. many of our health centers have solar powers and all other kinds of things to support power. So I think we've just latched into what was existing and perhaps trained the same health workers into a new vaccine. But they, they, they know how to they know how to reach the people. They need to do door to door from you know they can get onto doing it. So uh, I think that we, we, we got that right and it has fitted well in the health system as regards the, the COVID vaccine and in particular picking a vaccine that we can store. For the Pfizer, you need minus 70 degrees centigrade and that would have been a major challenge. But for this particular one, it's, it's not a major challenge and I think uh, we're on the right track. The primary health care centers are key players at this time. What must be done to enhance service delivery? Um, because many people still don't know how and where to get vaccinated because not everybody is um, computer literate. Must I register online? Must everybody register online? Can I just walk into any primary health care center to get vaccinated after the first phase? Because I know there are phases of, um, for the exercise. Okay, so I will start by saying if you have access to register online, start there. Why I'm saying so is for anybody that has filled that link, the moment you choose your um, local government area and it gives you the, the different um, words and PHCs around you. So it means that you don't need to think around where is the PHC. So of course, if it brings out a PHC and it sounds around where you live, then you can click on it. Even if you have never been there. I mean, these days you can find online where these places are. But I also know that a lot of PHCs are, you know, within, um, you know, 30 minutes walk or, or so within where people live. A lot of PHCs in Lagos states are nearby. So if you take a walk in, you know, they will tell you um, any necessary information that you need. So if it's not yet your turn to receive, you'll be told when to come back. And like I said, even in the PHC center, you know, one or two people that had issues registering before coming, they had the device where they could register them. So okay. I was happy that it doesn't exclude those who for any reason um, do not have access to online. Also, I noticed that when you register online, one of the questions it says is that do you want to register for another? Do you want to register for another person? Okay. So when you click yes, you want to register for another person. It's an opportunity for families to look over others or for mm. employers to look over their staff to ensure that someone you feel is not in that um, capability to register online. It can be done on behalf of the person. But notwithstanding, you walk into a PHC, you will still get the information you need. Thank you so much, Dr. Ogunyemi, for your time. It has been an honor to have you share your COVID-19 vaccination experience with us. Thank you for having me. Well, you've heard from the horse's mouth. The vaccines are safe. Prepare to get vaccinated. Besides, registration is seamless. Dr. Ogunyemi has been sharing a COVID-19 vaccination experience with us via Zoom. Dr. Donyo Ogunyemi is a public health physician. Sound Health continues with Trending Health Reports.
immunizing vaccines are safe and key in stemming the pandemic. However, non-pharmaceutical measures such as regular hand washing for at least 20 seconds, use of face masks and physical distancing are very vital. Please stay safe always. That's Sound Health this week. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS to 0035826603 or follow us on social media at TV Social. Hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice.